Welcome to Sabbath Worship on ASI Tobago. I am Elder Joshua Stewart. You had so much options this morning. You could have tuned into anything, but you chose to click on this link. And I'm telling you, we have a blessing in store for you today. But before I go any further, I'm going to pray. But you need to tell us where you're from. Put it in the chat. Let us know where are you tuning in from Put it in the chat. We would like to know. But wherever you are, bow your heads with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to give you thanks and praise for being the God that you are. What a blessing it is, Lord, that we could come into your house. Lord, just give you praise, give you thanks and praise for just who you are. I pray right now, Lord, for a blessing for someone that is tuning into this program, Lord. May you draw closer to them. And may your Holy Spirit just have an outpouring of blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, I told you we have a blessing in store for you. So let me tell you what you can expect as you tune in today. First up, we are going to be starting with Kingdom Children with Auntie J. And as we continue the theme, Once Upon a Celebration, we're going to be exploring different celebration in the Bible, and we want to take the lessons that we can take from these stories. Then right after that, we have Brother Kern, St. Helia, and Brother Junior Noel as we take us through the lesson study, the inverse lesson study. The morning sessions wouldn't seem complete without the adult lesson study. And here we have Sister Natasha Brown Aline and her guest, Pastor and Sister Frederick, will be joining them as we dive into the book of Psalms. But stay tuned for a blessing. Stay tuned. Happy Sabbath. I am so thankful that I am here in this new year. Are you thankful? I'm sure you are. To see a new year, to be alive today is a blessing. You may be in your comfortable home tuning in, but there are many in the world who are not so blessed. Let us remember the children who are in war zones, those who are hungry, those who feel alone. Please keep them in your prayers. I am Auntie J and welcome to Kingdom Children Preparing for Eternity on ASI Media Tobago. Wherever you are watching from, I am so pleased that you joined us for worship on this first Sabbath in 2024. A blessing awaits you for sure. I also encourage you to share the link so someone else can be also blessed. Yes, go on. Share the link now. Thank you. Great. Now we are ready to continue. Boys and girls, it is that time. We say it out loudly. The name of our series. Let us get ready. Three, two, one. Let's say it once upon a celebration. Great. Let us do it one more time for those who missed it. Ready? Three, two, one. Once upon a celebration. I think we can do much better. After all, this is the first Sabbath of the new year. Let us say it with great energy. Ready? Three, two, one. Once upon a celebration. Fantastic! I have been inviting you, Kingdom Children, to share photos of yourself at a celebration. And I think we have a few photos this week. I am excited. Are you? Here is Cassidy celebrating with her cousin Violet and little sister Catherine on the day of her baptism in July 2023. Giving your life to Jesus is truly a reason for a celebration. Next is Catherine celebrating her sixth birthday and day of adventure investiture with her dad. Congratulations, Catherine! Here we have brothers, Roger and Riel, all dressed up and ready 
for our wedding celebration. I am sure they had tons of fun. And here they are again with cousins, Imaya and Zuria. Thank you, Cassidy, Catherine, Violet, Imaya, Zuria, Ro Roger, and Riel for sharing with us. If you would like to see your photo here and be a part of this segment, please send your photo to asitobago at gmail.com and include your first name and what or where you are celebrating. Today, we will learn about the Last Supper. Have you ever heard about the Last Supper that happened in the Bible, boys and girls? If you have not, well, today is the day you will learn about it. And for those who are familiar, you will be reminded and hopefully learn something new from it. We have our Kingdom Children Praise Team standing by, so let us switch gears and have a grand time singing praises to God. Fire fall on me On the day of Pentecost Fire 
Happy Sabbath to all of you lovely boys and girls during our faith jam today. I know that you guys are learning a whole lot. Today, I want to share my faith with you on why it is important to serve others. How would you feel if someone called you a servant? Would you smile and say thank you very much? There are many people who do not think it is a compliment to be called a servant. But did you know boys and girls? that Jesus taught us how to be good servants. In fact, in Isaiah 52 verse 13, it says, See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. I like how that sounds, don't you? Jesus invites us to serve others. I remember the time he wanted to wash his disciples' feet. The disciples were not happy that Jesus was going to stoop down and clean their feet, but he told them that it was necessary for him to do it. Did you hear that? Jesus thought it was necessary to be a servant. He encourages boys and girls to look to see how they can help others. Some say that there is great joy in serving others. I remember Little Maid in the story of Naaman. She served with joy, even though I am sure she did not like being held captive. She brought great joy to Naaman's home. When I help around the house, my parents are very happy. They, they, say, they say many hands make light work. Yes, boys and girls, if we all serve each other, we can have a very happy experience. How can you serve? Just be kind. Offer your mom a glass of water when she is outside working hard. Be happy to run and grab something for your dad. Help your brother or sister with their homework. Help your teacher carry her books or help her bag or something. Be being a servant does not mean getting on your knees and scrubbing floors and working very hard. It simply means serving others around you. God really likes it when we serve others. So, boys and girls, it has been a pleasure sharing my faith with you on why we should serve others. I am Rural Utley, inviting you to bring a smile on not just someone else's face, but also on your face as you serve them in joy. Our celebration today, the Last Supper, is part of another celebration the Jews observed in the Bible time. And some Jews today continue to observe and celebrate it. Do you know what that celebration is? If you said Passover, you are correct. But we are going to focus on the Last Supper. Do you know, boys and girls, that many Christians celebrate this Last Supper today? Or some version of it? By the end of the story, I will ask you what do you think that celebration is? Today's story can be found in more than one book in the Bible. Matthew 26, 17 to 30, Mark 14, 12 to 31, Luke 22, 7 to 39, and John 13, 1 to 17, and verse 26. Once upon a celebration, when the day of the Passover celebration arrived, Jesus sent Peter and John to find a place to prepare their Passover meal. As soon as you enter Jerusalem, you will see a man carrying a pitcher of water, he told them. Follow him into the house he enters. The master of the house will show you a room. Prepare the meal for us there. Peter and John entered Jerusalem and saw a man carrying a pitcher of water. 
This was unusual in that usually only women carried water for domestic use. But they obeyed Jesus' instructions and followed the man and he led them to a house. Peter and John told the owner of the house, Our teacher would like you to show us the guest room where he can eat the Passover meal with his disciples. The owner showed them into a large room. Peter and John began preparing the Passover meal. When Jesus and the disciples arrived, there was not a servant to wash their feet. So Jesus poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel. Now, it was customary to have your feet washed by a servant upon entering a home. Remember, the people wore sandals and walked on dusty roads and many times walked for long distances, so their feet would often be covered with dust. Peter said to him, Master, you shouldn't be washing our feet like this. Jesus replied, You don't understand now why I am doing it. Someday you will. No, Peter protested, You shall never wash my feet. You see, boys and girls, the disciple who Jesus was going to have supper with did not understand what was about to take place. But if I don't, you can have no part with me, Jesus replied. At the time to celebrate the Passover, they all sat down. Jesus said, I am excited to be eating this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. Boys and girls, did you hear that? Jesus said before his suffering begins. Do you have any idea of what he meant by that? Let's continue our story. While they were eating, Jesus announced, One of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. Judas, who was near Jesus, asked, Surely you don't mean me. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Then he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I will not drink wine again until I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. Jesus was trying to tell the disciples the time had come for him to return to heaven, and he was going there to prepare a place, not only for them, but for all those who accept him as Savior and live by his word. Jesus promised them that he would send the Holy Spirit to help and comfort them, and Jesus prayed for his disciples. Boys and girls, there's a ceremony we celebrate today that resembles the Last Supper Jesus had with his disciples on that evening of Passover. Can you guess what it is? Yes, communion service. Just like the disciples washed feet, ate bread, and drank wine, and were instructed to do it in remembrance of Jesus, we do that today. And it is a grand celebration because it reminds us of the great sacrifice Jesus made for us. And we celebrate what he has done for us. He died on the cross so that we may have a second opportunity to live eternally with him in heaven. I am so happy and thankful that I can take part in the communion service to remind myself of what Jesus did for me. I've tried to win this war, I 
confess my hands are weary i need your rest mighty warrior king of the fight no matter what i face you're by my side when you don't move the mountains i'm needing you to move when you don't part the waters i wish i could walk through when you don't give the answers as i cry out to you i will trust i will trust i will trust in you truth is you know what tomorrow brings there's not a day ahead you have not seen so when nothing be my life and breath I won't watch you one Lord and nothing less when you don't move the mountains I'm needing you to move when you don't part the waters I wish I could walk through when you don't give the answers as I cry out to you I will trust I will trust I will trust in strength and comfort you are my steady hand you are my firm foundation the rock on which i stand your ways are always higher your plans are always good there's not a place where i'll go you've not already stood when you don't move the mountains i'm needing you to move I could walk through when you don't give the answers as I cry out to you I will trust I will trust I will trust in you I will trust in you When last did you invite me over for dinner? Do you need an invitation? Don't I? I think I do. Why are you always thinking about food? Well, you said you were sharing with the boys and girls the lesson of the Last Supper. You know, I believe that every celebration must have lots and lots of food. Besides, how else will I be able to grow and get stronger and wiser if I do not study my tummy? It's called being wise. It's called being... Hey, none of that today. Let us talk to the boys and girls about what they could expect to experience at the Biblical Last Supper. Right. Boys and girls, today the experience of the Last Supper can be seen in any of our churches. There are two features that you can expect to find at our modern Last Supper celebration. These are food and drink, Eliana's favorite. But it's not any food and drink. It's a special bread and a special drink. But you know what? The food at this celebration is served in limited quantities. Boys and girls, there's a reason for that. The food at this celebration was used as symbols. Eating the bread and wine was a symbol of God's people accepting the death of Jesus as an action that would save their souls. So there is no big feast. Oh boy. But it is a meaningful feast and we can enjoy it more th for this reason. Knowing that when we eat the bread and drink the wine, we show God that we accept and appreciate the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. We can feel satisfied even though we have not eaten a whole lot. Another aspect of the Last Supper celebration is the serving of the meal. The meal is served by the leaders of the church. This is significant because it shows that even leaders can serve. Also, the meal is served after we wash each other's feet. We serve each other by being kind enough to wash each other's feet. 
I believe this part of the celebration is called the service of humility. Did you know that Jesus washed his disciples' feet at the Last Supper too? I think we can learn many lessons from this celebration. Even though it focuses on eating bread and drinking wine, we learn to serve, we learn to share, we learn to be satisfied with little and we learn to be grateful. I think that this celebration is a very joyful one, even though some people wear black and white as if we are celebrating the death of Jesus. I think we should be celebrating the new life that Jesus gives to us. I think so too. Cele Celebrations are happy moments. Boys and girls, remember, no matter what circumstance you are in, there is always a reason to celebrate God's love. Once upon a celebration, Jesus served his disciples. Now it is the time to do what? Oh yes, to do. Once upon a celebration, Jesus served his disciples. Now it is time to do others because it's celebration time. This supper Jesus had with his disciples was indeed the last meal he had with them before his death, resurrection, and ascension to heaven. And we, his followers, celebrate deliverance from sin through Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son to this earth to die for us. We thank you for giving us the communion service as a remembrance of the great sacrifice you made. Help us to always remember that sacrifice and to always live for you as good kingdom children. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Bye boys and girls. Until next time. again to yet another inverse lesson study. Happy Sabbath teach and everyone and may the Lord continue to bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. This is a new year. It's 2024 and indeed the lesson is very interesting as I would turn back to the very beginning and it is inverse the Jesus and liberty. Jesus and liberty. Jesus and freedom. Do we have freedom to do certain things because we are in Christ? We will see more as the entire quarter continues. Mm -hmm. But before we go forward, my name is Junior Noel again, and I have here with me Kern Sintile. And this year is a leap year, I come to your understanding. <laughs> yeah. So I like my acronyms, may the Lord embrace all people. May the Lord embrace all people. May he encourage all people. And may he also utilize all of us as we continue in these times. So Kern, just Pray for us as we begin, and we go right into the lesson. Okay. Let's pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you again for guiding us safely through to see yet this another Sabbath day. We ask of you, Lord, as we get into this study, as we get into this lesson, we thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit with us. Guide us thoughts, guide us that we would have a wonderful time. We would learn from your word, and those, and even those who are watching as well, dear God, would learn as well. And we thank you for your blessings and we thank you for this opportunity. Just as when we pray. Amen. Oh, and the last, the last leap acronym mm. that I really wanted to share is that as we are TMI total members involvement, right. may the Lord utilize, in terms of utilizing everyone, may he engage all people. Lord, engage all people from the CQ in verse, um, I would like to say crew, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. keeping it, you know, normal. 
I just want to just share with us that everyone, if we are engaged by the Lord, we're going to do mighty works for him. So the spirit of Christ, mm -hmm. the spirit of Christ. That's this, that's the spirit. It, I, I don't, I don't, when I look at it, I was like, wow, they really start like this? Mm -hmm. If they start like this, imagine how the rest of the quarter is going to go. You know, right? The spirit of Christ. Let's get into it because it's a topic that we kind of stray away from because it requires certain types of um, responsibility, I should want to say. And it, in, it, it causes us also to come to a place of understanding the heart issues. Mm -hmm. And then also, who am I really? And then not just who am I really, you know, but who am I really serving? All right, yeah. Who am I really yeah. serving? So you as an individual and then who you're really serving. So we want to get into the script here. You have about a little over 10 verses here. I want to read them. And then we're going to... Um, get into, you know, discussing what the, what the scripture says. So the scripture is Luke chapter 9, verses 43 unto 56. 56. Luke chapter 9, 43 unto 56, and I believe you all could follow us. And they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. But while they wondered, everyone at all things which Jesus did, he said unto his disciples, let these sayings sink down into your ears, for yeah. the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. Yeah. But they understood not the saying, and it was hid from them, that they perceived it not. And they feared to ask him of that saying. Then there arose a reasoning amongst them, which of them should be the greatest. And Jesus, perceiving the thought of, the, of their heart, took a child and set him by him. And said unto them, Whosoever shall receive this child in my name, receive it me. And whosoever shall receive me, receive it him that sent me. For he that is least among you, you all the same shall be great. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followeth not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us, is for us. Is for us. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem yeah. and sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was, was as though he would go to Jerusalem. To Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? And he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. So it's so interesting, the lesson captivates this um, storyline. It also captivates the experience that was taking place and even the reasoning. I like the fact that there were a lot of the text that, this, that we are actually going into. is two pericope kind of coming together in one, or maybe about three. Well, I'm seeing here four, according to how it's outlined. Mm -hmm. And we are looking at the fact that there's a, transi there's a trans transition between each of the pericope, although they are somewhat one in terms of its whole series, but it's bringing about the fact that God is looking at our reasoning and our mindset and the state of mind, our state of, of being, how we are on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And he's drawing out at us that ministry is not getting up to just go and accomplish tasks to take off but that ministry speaks to who we are even before we do something. Right. So he's looking at their hearts. He's looking at the aspect of what the disciples are about to do and even what he is about to do. But he's saying if his face is towards Jerusalem and he's also measuring the fact of the things that he has to accomplish because mm -hmm. he says as the very beginning, as you were rightfully um, reading there, that let this sink down in your ears. In other words... Take full cognizance of what I'm about to tell you. Right. For the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. Hmm. But look where their minds went. 
they did not even start to think about what does that really mean in its fullness, but they feared to ask him what he was saying. So they didn't, because the text really point right. that out. But in, in all of it, Jesus perceiving the thoughts of their hearts, took a child and set it before them because they were reasoning who is the greatest. Who is the greatest. And now you see, and even with that, and what the lesson points out um, in the intro, which I find is very interesting, yeah. in that there was a time when Christians were oppressed. Correct. There was a time when Christians were oppressed. And then there was a, you will see a breeder. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And then now, those that were oppressed now become the oppressive. So they were, op they were oppressed once upon a time, and then they got a breather, and then they are now coming to oppress other people. Right? And, and then it, it shows... And then using the name of religion to do it. it. And that is it, and they're using religion to do it. And then even that's what the, 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 the text points out as well, in that sometimes when we do things in the name of religion, Right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that God is in the mix of it, you know. All right. Because sometimes we just say we are doing what we are doing in the name of religion, in the name of Christianity, in the name of God. But you're realizing, because Christ pointed out here. And he did and point it out. He pointed yes. out here. Mm -hmm. and, and we are seeing that we are repeating these same things because the intention, and, and it's the same thing that, that the lesson pointed out, and the scripture, in that because these people rejected us, let us call fire down from heaven. Right. right, right. Because they reject us or they don't want us there and this kind of stuff. And sometimes we even as Christians, when we give somebody a message or we go by them um, and, and they say, I don't want your handouts, I don't want your, your pamphlets, I don't want your priorities and this kind of stuff, we just get vexed. Just get vexed and want to say, well, um, you know, behave in a particular way that definitely is not Christian because in their mind, they thought they, they are thinking that they are behaving in a particular way that reflects Christ, mm -hmm. but, but it isn't. And it's something that we ever have to be also careful about, about how we operate as well from that standpoint, is that not everybody that you go to that will be, would be open to what you have to offer, right? And your operation should be just as how Jesus did here. Right? Um, you dust off your foot, you know, in some places. As he, as he directly said. Dust off your foot. Dust and the you feet of your foot and, and you move feet, on. And you move on. Because it's like, you might be the person, and then when we, we shouldn't start to rationalize why they didn't accept. They didn't accept. God said, dust off your foot and move on. For what you know, then another opportunity might be presented itself. You understand? And it's, it's not about us forcing, and I think that is where the Jesus principle comes into play. It's not about forcing yourself on people. It's True. just about them realizing you have something good to offer, and it's up to them if they want to accept it or not. Because and, and as you rightfully said there, the Spirit of Christ does not speak to one. The Spirit of Christ is the Spirit of, of serving right. and not being served. Correct. And, and, and this is what happened to them because their mindset of being the greatest means that I, I will receive service. Homage will come to me. Right. And you could imagine Jesus is there. The one who deserves homage mm -hmm. is not living to receive it, although he deserves it. And in more than that, just by living the life that he ought to live, homage will come to him. But more than that is the fact that they brought a child and placed the child right. in front of them. Mm -hmm. And if they could not have become like that child, they would not have been even receiving the one who sent Christ. Mm -hmm. Because he says, whosoever shall receive this child in my name receiveth me. And this is the understanding of the fact that the child is not looking for authority or to be great. The child just knows that whatever the child has to do, they will do their part faithfully mm -hmm. and they continue about life. Yeah. They are not yeah. concerned about if they are going to be great or not great as the case may be. And then something jumped out here where it would have been talking about during that tyrannical time in the millennials where they, as you were rightfully talking about with the churches and, and all that was taking place, who was running into caves to so worship and that kind of thing. And the, the torture was there and the Christians would have welcomed the Edict of Milan which was the first proclamation mm -hmm. guaranteeing religious liberty to every citizen of the Roman Empire. But as you rightfully said, so I don't want to go back over that, 
it switched gears. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they received freedom and now became the tyrant. Mm -hmm. And then we see here now where, look at the dangerous thing here, Christian churches form alliances with the emperor that granted them large government favors. Right. The church has a whole became corrupt with political and financial ambitions that directly opposed Jesus' principle. Mm -hmm. Yes, we ought to gain the farthest extent of the world. But if we gain the world and still lose the soul, mm -hmm. then that is very dangerous. And, and here Christ had to talk to them about it because they were living in the area where they were trying to get a temporal Correct. A, a temporal reign. And you see, that, and that is that is where. So are we are we trying in these times to get a temporal reign in 2024? That is that, that's just that a question. That's eh? a question. I'll, that's I'll that's get a straight question. at it. I'm not gonna. I'm that's gonna get around it. But then, even even for us, we can look at that and see, um, in a lot of places, people wouldn't have certain conversations or talk about certain things because of the same favors that they would get from the government and from other entities that you would look at. So does it so, blind, does it blind our spiritual mm -hmm. well-being? But that is what it is. Because if, if you look at this, when he says, whosoever shall receive this child. Now, how I view that as receiving this child, um, the, it, it, is, it, is, it is a level of insignificance. Right? All right. The child. The child, more or less, if you look at a child, most of us will look at a child as an expense because they bring nothing to the table, more or mm. less. We have to take care of them. We have to deal with them. All right. So, so, so from that point of view, that is why I look at it like that. So when you receive the child, you're actually receiving somebody that cannot contribute to your life, that you more or less is the one that have to deal with them, help them, up in them, and this kind of stuff. It's not adult. Because if you say, hey, um, you would quicker call an adult to help you than a child. Right? Mm -hmm. So that is, what, that is what I'm looking at when he put the, put the child there. So oh, then, so, oh, and, and then he spoke to that because he, understanding their hearts, right. knew that they would have come to the point to talk about um, calling on fire. That's right. And who is the greatest? And you know, this, this argument about who is the greatest and this kind of stuff. But then you realize that this child. And even their prejudice with the Samaritan village. Correct. So, so he see, saw all of those things in their hearts. You see all of those things. So when you point this out here, when you point this out here, you are saying that God is telling us, Christ was telling them and he's telling us today as well that we should not be looking at things from a point of view of power and authority or from what we can get out of it. We should be always be willing to deal with things in a particular way that, that, that there is no direct benefit to us, but there is benefit to the other person. That is how we're supposed to be operating. That is the spirit that we're supposed to get in that um, we are willing to give up and to deal with receiving someone and give up certain things in that way, it would be a benefit to them, you know, more to them than mm -hmm. to us. Because he says that whoever, whosoever shall receive this child in my name, receive it me. Right. So your intention now is you're doing it because of your love for Christ. Mm -hmm. You're doing it because of your, you want to build that relationship with Christ. You're not doing it because of what the benefits are. And that is why he put there, who is the greatest? How they are, they are among themselves, right? The prejudice is there. The cultural ideology is still there within them. Yes. So Christ has to now change that and show them that, hey, this is not it. And then even in verse 49, this is what 49, because for me, I personally, I love this particular text, verse 49. Um, when, 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 when John said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name and we forbade him because he followed not with us. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said to them, forbid him not, for he is not... For he, he is that not is not against, against us is for us. For us. And, and to me, that brings about an, 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 an idea when it comes to religious liberty in regards to freedom. You should allow, you shouldn't, because Christ, and I, I, I could be wrong, but then throughout the lesson, it mentioned it in the lesson that Christ didn't force anybody to follow him. Christ didn't come with a... Love, is not, love is not force. You, you understand what I'm saying? So even if you present Christ, to persons and they still want to go in a particular direction, you should not stop loving them. You mm -hmm. still should should be able to love them. And when Christ said, said this, there's a possibility that there might be persons in different, and I might, may I say, different religions, different cultures, and this kind of stuff that God is working through them, that Christ is working through them. Yes. But not because we have a different um, certain aspects theologically 
that doesn't mean that God can't work with them because it says that if God says so, forbid him not, for he is he that is not against us is for us. So there are persons across the world, and I think this is where Jesus comes to say this to, to, to not be to have us not be um, just be close minded to, to a particular religion. But Jesus came to supersede that to show us, hey, once persons are willing to be used by me, truth will come. And they would go in the direction that they need to go. And they would be exposing the necessary truth to, to have a closer walk with So me. then to present the spirit of Christ, we cannot present it where persons feel as though they are under some type of strife right. or tyranny. Mm -hmm. But that in love, those that are to receive Christ are going to receive him because they would understand him. And just because of this lesson study and probably looking at ourselves, we may be really not presenting Christ that even a child could receive him. Mm -hmm. Or we might, be, we might be scaring away people from who Correct. really God Correct. is. Correct. So what he's trying to do is tell the disciples, hey, I am about to leave. You are the ones to carry on. But if you are continuing with that spirit, then the one who you're saying is not of me and you're saying, should we do what? Should we... Um, should we cast out, oh, so, um, what he says here? What is this? There he was 49. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one cast and, and we forbade him. Yeah. If, if we mm -hmm. are not presenting Christ in the spirit of Christ to the world and others are doing it and we are the ones forbidding them, then we have to be very, very careful. We have to be very careful. But that is what it is. No, no. And, and even with that, you having you are having the challenge that because then God should have forbid the disciples Correct. from even following Christ mm -hmm. because they of themselves was not even in their whole mind and spirit talking in the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Put it that way. But that is what it is. So you, you and I guess that's why our topic was outlined: spirit of disciples. <laughs> you are the spirit of Christ. You are spirit, spirit of, of disciples. disciples. That's right. And that's that's where the challenge is now in that we, we, we sometimes bring God down to a particular religion or just bring him down to that. So we're when opening up what churches be like now. Correct. So, yeah, so, I, so I, it's I more than that. Yeah. It's more than that because the thing is when we interact with people, when we interact with people, do they feel God's presence or do they feel a religion? And, that is, and that, is, that, is where, that is where it is. Do they feel God's presence or do they feel our religion? Because the thing is, is that... But then our feel, religion, if, you, if there's something called true religion, then our religion correct. supposed to represent Christ. If we're not correct. representing Christ, then of what religion are we? Correct. And because religion is our way of life. Mm -hmm. And now I'm using the word religion broadly. But I understand because, what you're saying. Because yeah. the thing is, is that sometimes some of us they are say that we are Seventh-day Adventists, but we don't represent what Seventh-day Adventists is. You right. Understand? Right. And that is the right. thing. Understand. And and that is where that is where the challenge is for a lot of us because we would be more caught up in culture and how things are and the status quo of how we're supposed to operate and these kind of stuff. So the mixing and this kind of stuff, you know, there are there are persons like like I would I would give an example when you say there are folks when they when they are in the week. During the week, they are one person, and when Sabbath, they are totally different person. Mm -hmm. I hear some people make the comment that when they when they going through the week is normal, and they're doing all kind of crazy thing. But when Sabbath reaches, like they step out of heaven mm. on Sabbath. But then before during the week, but the thing is, is not what you do on Sabbath, but it's what you, what you do in the week. Because just like these disciples, right? In their mind, they were doing what God has called them to do. Right? Mm -hmm. And that is where that is where we could really lose the mark a lot of times because we will be thinking that we are doing what God has called us to do. But what we are what the spirit that is guiding us, because just as when and I said I had to look at it, look into it when when um when it said call called call fire to come down from heaven as Elias. Elijah, and that was yeah. Elijah, right? And I was talking about when um a king, I can't remember his name, a king um he sent a messenger to an idol for counsel. Right. Right? And Elijah is like, what, what kind of craziness is this? Why are you sending? Isn't there a God in Israel? Yeah. Isn't there a God in Israel? Right? Yes. And the man, he was insist, that king was insist on sending. He sent one leader and 50. Elijah called on fire from heaven on that one. That, Correct. That, that. Second set come, fire come down from heaven on them as well. Third one. 
prophets who say because he come to me and said, Elijah, I know your power. I know that there is a God in Israel and approach. So please fear me. Please fear me. And then you are seeing now, with that now, the mindset of the disciples because of what Elijah did there. They are thinking, they, they, they that, are thinking that. that because these people are rejecting God that we should be able to call down fire from heaven. But again, again, it comes back to the spirit yeah. of what is guiding you to do this, mm -hmm. right? Because, because back then, even in Elijah's time, if God is the one, because God told him, save, save, that third set, they saved them. Yeah. God said, save them. Don't, don't, don't call on fire on them, right? Don't call on judgment. Basically, what God is saying, don't call on judgment on them. The call on judgment on them. So it is very important for us to understand that. Ahaziah was the right? was the one named fell through, fell through a lattice, mm -hmm. and then being sick, go inquire of Beelzebub, the god right. of Ekron, mm -hmm. whether I shall recover of this disease. And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah of Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messenger of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, It is not because there is not a god in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron. So we can see again, because some might say is Elijah was angry or whatever the case may be and wanted to call. These disciples were angry mm -hmm. because they thought to themselves that the privilege and the rich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Elijah, on the other hand, he was falling in the direction that, that, of God. And that whole yeah. thing was mm -hmm. about God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the third time when the third group acknowledged that there is a God, God, hand of mercy, Mm -hmm. was there outstretched and decided that these will not, because now they recognize that there's a God in Israel. They right. of their own lips said that, because mm -hmm. it was the same set of people that was going to this Beelzebub. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying for us today, sometimes for 2023, we might have looked at some persons and they were going down some paths. And we may say, these people have the spirit of Christ. But yet, while they would have come to the acknowledgement that God is God, mm -hmm. should we still decide to look upon them in the same manner. Furthermore, we shouldn't be looking at anyone in any manner, Correct. but that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and that all are deserving, because Christ came to seek and to save. And that is why he end off in Luke to say that is what he came to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't know what spirit you're talking of. And there is the issue that we need to really take contextually, what Elijah's mission was about, and what did the Lord sent him. Many times we go and God didn't send us. But so then what spirit did we go correct. in? And that is that is that. And then when we are so hmm. when we are when we are combative to try to bring out God's principle in person's life, we find ourselves trying to do more for the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit could do for himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so here it is, we have we have that false allegiance that was coming out in a lesson study. And we also had that ultimate demonstration of what Christ would have expressed that the right. disciples ought to do, mm -hmm. which we read, we read in Philippians. And, and friends, take time to go through Philippians 2. Don't just read Philippians 2, 5. Let this mind be in you, <laughs> which was also in Christ Jesus. Go back there's from one and come forward. There's a lot more. There's a lot and come forward when it says esteem each other better than itself. Imagine... Yep. The disciples was to esteem the child even better than themselves. Right. And right, if we esteem right. each other better than ourselves, guess what? We are all still on a level playing field because Kern is better than me, and then Kern will esteem me better than himself, Correct. and then we still level. Everybody, 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 everybody going level. Up. Everybody going up. Everybody going up. But that spirit of Christ speaks to the mission of Christ, and it's talking. You see, look, it says here: For who is least among you all will be the greatest. Mm -hmm. Who is least among you all would be the greatest. And if they could not have received that child, they could not have received Christ because Christ came even as the scripture pointed out in Psalms as the adults. I'm not going to jump over there, but as the adults are talking about Psalms, mm -hmm. it speaks significantly that he is poor. Mm -hmm. That he came and he's going to be poor mm -hmm. and lowly. Even the Genesis that come talk about that in terms of um, Lamech. That, that, that's, that's before Noah. Noah's... Um, just before Noah in that series of the genealogy of, of Christ. But what I want to say here is this. Paul admonishes us to let this mind be new, which was also in Christ Jesus. And, and it goes down there to talk about the fact that he is God. And he did not take that. Yeah. And I'm saying for us today, even for young people, you might be leading out in church, um, whoever is the first elder in church, pastor, God called you to serve. Christ is our leader. And if we follow him, we will lead. Definitely. If we follow him, we will lead. But mm -hmm. when we lead, we wouldn't follow. No, no, no. no. All right. And that is the thing. So we have the question here, and I really want to wanna 
ask these questions, and I think we yes. want to um, answer these questions. How can we know which spirit we're really of? How can we make sure we don't mistakenly think we have Christ's spirit when we are actually of our culture's spirit? And you know, this question is something that has been emanating throughout um, my life, I would say. Because a lot of our things we do is based on tradition and culture. Mm -hmm. And I am, I am, as from since I still consider myself a young man, but even when I was younger, I used to question everything about why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. Why certain things are happening? Why it has to be this process? Why it has to be this procedure? And then when I asked the question, I said, can you give me some Bible to support why we're doing what we're doing? And then if there is not no scriptural reference to support it, I will challenge it. I will not challenge it to say that it is wrong, but I will challenge it to say, so then that means that we could make some changes here and there because it's more custom and culture than Bible. Than, than Bible. Right? Okay. And that is where, that is where we, 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 we spend a lot of time. We spend a lot of time um, on culture and how the church is supposed to be and how we're supposed to be looking at things. And then we realize that a lot of these things that we bicker about, we are majoring in minors, we bickering about it, but we are not setting aside, we are not doing the weightier matter. As, 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 as Christ said, mm -hmm. we can't deal with the weightier matter of things because we major in the minor. So the little things that has no issue whether it go left or right, we want to spend time focused on that. And then now, when the weightier things of feeding the poor, um, clothing the naked, helping those who I need, we're not doing Until that. You these. understand? We're not doing that. We're spending time just, just chatting away about things that is insignificant. And that is where, for me, I see that we have to really check ourselves to realize that, really, what spirit are we really of? Because the, the, the disciples, they were, they were very much confident that they were doing God's work. But they were heavily involved in their culture. They, they, they grew up in their culture. Correct. The culture would have informed and instruct the way they think. Right. And now Christ brought the kingdom of heaven there was that tension within their mind to let go of the things that they would have hold dear to. And then if you are oppressed for so long, whatever is inside of you is going to come out. Right. Somebody had an orange, I was doing a demonstration on Facebook there, and they had an orange in their hand. I said, this is an orange. If I squeeze this orange, the only thing that's going to come out is orange juice. Mm -hmm. And he squeezed it, and what came out? Not lime, orange juice. Right. So they said, if I squeeze you, and it seems to me that the things that come out of us is when we are pressed. Right. If you really want to know the trueness of who we are, squeeze us, and then you will know. Mm -hmm. When you squeeze us, is the works of the flesh coming out or the fruit of the Spirit? Love, right. joy, peace, patience, kindness, right. goodness, faithfulness, mm -hmm. gentleness, self-control. Mm -hmm. Not just how it is listed, but the livelihood of its characteristics being seen. Right. Is that coming out? Correct. Or is anger, mm -hmm. backbiting? Maliciousness, envy, strife, mm. bickering, murmuring, grudges, all, greed, all of it. avarice, that you is, name it. That is what it. is coming out of us when we are pressed on every side? And 2023 pressed us, but I'm telling you now, is it 2024? Christ <laughs> has put us back into the crucibles and he's going to squeeze. We are at the wine press right now and he wants true wine, new wine in new wine skins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, youths. Mm -hmm. Look out for it. New wine in new wine skins. And I'm going to let you know today to know if you have the spirit of Christ when you are pressed on every side. Are you running back to the things that you know? Correct. Or are you running to deal with it the way Christ dealt with it? Right. Shake the dust off your feet and move on. Mm -hmm. I am talking to Junior Noel here right about this time because Junior Noel sometimes does not shake the dust off your feet and move on. Do we need the last say? Right. No. Shake the dust off your feet and move on. Remember this, when you are witnessing to persons, false allegiance is not going to work. That's Satan's business. He yep. wants to yep. force you Correct. into accepting Christ. Mm -hmm. but, but, but Christ's life is about a voluntary service. Mm -hmm. Let no one force you into doing what you ought to do. Otherwise, you're not at liberty. Mm -hmm. You're not free. You're not free. You're not free. You're not and that free. is why sometimes I was wondering why persons have a hang up with the law when the law is is for you to be free. And, and you see, and, and even with that. And when you are lawless, uh, you are imprisoned. <laughs> that is it to know. That is it to know. 
The if the son has like set that, you free, you're free, you're free indeed. You're free indeed. You're free indeed. You're free indeed. And, and that is for me, I just, I just try to understand the, the, the rationale, but then it goes back to the same point that we think we are doing God's work, but when we have a form of godliness. And denying because, the power there. That's right. Because there are certain things that we are willing to hold on to. There are certain cultural aspects that we are willing to hold on to. And the reality is that you can't serve God and mammon. So you have to choose one. And that is where we know we're not understanding. Because we're thinking, because we hold fast to tradition, because that is what the scribes and Pharisees did. And even in the Gospels, it speaks to that they prefer. Their, their, I remember when they were crucifying Christ, they said that our king is Caesar. Yes. Right? We serve only Caesar. And that's a very strong statement. It's a very strong statement. It's a, strong statement. It's a very strong and, statement. And, it's not, and, and we are not looking at the fact that they, they are negating the power of Christ or what Christ come to do, but saying now that we serve Caesar is actually removing God from the picture as well. So you're telling me, God calls me to do something, but I'm serving somebody else. But then yet still I'm doing God's work is a very precarious position to be because you believe that you have been called out into a particular mind, into a particular situation or a particular um, will. Um, yeah. And you might say it's God's will, but it actually is not. We have to be thankful that we know the end of the story because after Christ left, the disciples them understood what their role and function was. and what Whatever God was, was supposed to soak in, Correct. finally sunk. That's right. So, so they removed, so all cultural barriers that was there was no longer there. So they now were one with the Spirit, one with God, so they could have gone and be very much powerful at that time. And I'm thankful that Christ was patient with them while going through that. And it seems to me that the Spirit of Christ speaks to the long suffering. Oh, mm -hmm. that's part of the fruit. Yes. It's part of the fruit. But then, but then ask, but, the question but, comes to mind. Just before you go, be, go ahead. Can you be patient? Can you be patient with someone? who has been in the church longer than you have been alive. And there are certain points or certain things you expect them to get, they're not getting. How, 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 how does that go? Can you be, still be patient with them? But it goes for all of us. Because many of them were within the church for so, for so much years. And hear what Christ would say. I have, no, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Mm -hmm. Spending few times with, with the one whose servant was sick, and he said, "Just say the word. I have authority. You just say the word. I have not found so great. No, mm -hmm. um, my daughter, your faith has made you whole. But what Christ was looking for that the just shall live by faith. That faith to know that God is more than able to supply all our needs according to His riches in glory. They didn't have it there. They were relying, and culturally speaking." Look, it was said there. Mm -hmm. And throughout Israel's history, they were always running to places when God was their provider from the get-go. Mm -hmm. God was their, their, God was their gyra from the get-go. Mm -hmm. If, my young people, you have a time to read through systematically um, 1 John chapter 3 and 1 John chapter 4, when you read it through systematically, you're going to get the heart of what this question is to speak about, understanding how you're not going to mistake the spirit of Christ for the spirit of culture. Mm -hmm. Because for far long, my friends, we might have been entertaining the spirit of error mm -hmm. than the spirit of truth. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. To present truth or to speak present truth, I should say, is to present truth. Yeah. That's it. To speak and to live present truth is to present truth. Who is truth? Present Christ, the Spirit of Christ. If the Spirit of Christ is calling you to live a higher purpose and one that speaks to, not walking along what culture says, but what the kingdom of heaven says. Remember, Christ brought newness of life, and newness of life is not of the old. Right. You cannot put the old, the new life or new garment onto an old. It will, it will not stay it together. Work, no, no. It wouldn't work. With same thing with the wine, it's gonna burst the wine skin. So for, for 2024, as we go forward, let Christ create in you a clean heart and let him renew a right. That would and Psalms, David mm. said, <laughs> renew a right. I don't want to get into the okay. adults, but renew a right, right spirit. spirit yeah. And this is what mm -hmm. Paul was talking about. Look mm -hmm. at Christ. His, his life was to show a new spirit. It was to tell. Look, time when I wrap up and the thing, no, we're no getting deeper into the thing. I don't like, we had to talk to these persons that are in charge 
<laughs> to let us know sometime, just chuck me and say, yeah, take our next little 10 minutes, Steve. <laughs> but I don't know, you have any, you have any other point? Because I'm, I'm seeing it when we talk about no false allegiance, that the son of righteousness must rise, according to Malachi, with healing in his wings. And that was the last chapter of the Old Testament. And then when the New Testament come alive, we saw the son of righteousness who rose that, that, day, that day star. Mm -hmm. Dawn in our hearts, mm -hmm. and indeed, if he is dawning in our hearts, that service of love must be seen. Yep, yep, yep. It cannot be commanded. It cannot be won by force or authority. Only by love is love awakened. Correct. And you see that truth, and that is what when we speak truth in love, or from that perspective of love, we are actually speaking the, and if I might use the word, the ultimate truth. Because sometimes we say things because it is true, but then we don't take it, we don't give it from a point of view of love. And that is where Christ is calling us to be. When Christ, when Christ did it to his disciples on a point of view of love, because I want you to get it. I don't want you to leave here without getting it. So Christ is calling each and every one of us that yes, we have the truth. Yes, we know what truth is, but we should speak about it in love. Because we, if we speak about it in love, it will show that we are truly free it shows that we are we, we have that religious liberty. How would they know that we and are then, disciples? We have love one for another. Correct. So we would reflect Christ. So when others come to Christ, they would not be coming um, with a with a mindset of I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do the other. But they will come with the mindset that I am free because I'm giving my life to Christ. And I think that is where we're supposed to be at when we give truth, give truth from a point of view of love. Even when we relate to our brethren, we should still relate to them from a point of view of love. Even though all of us who have been in church for years and certain things they're still not getting or certain things they're still battling with, we still have to deal with them from a point of view of love. Because if we have experienced true freedom, it is easy for others now to really experience that true freedom. But then if all of us are in bondage, we are no more or less just bringing people into more bondage. But then we of ourselves, brethren, we have to experience that freedom. And that and is what Christ had to bring for yes, the disciples. He had, to bring, he had to bring that principle you just talked about there. Mm -hmm. and, that, and the lesson start off like that, you know, ignoring Jesus' principle. And mm -hmm. I guess we really need to get back to what the heart of worship is and what the principle thing is. Christ said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And the spirit of Christ is not burdensome. The spirit of Christ isn't heavy. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is, my friends, if we hold on to self and we cannot deny self and self for 24 and the me and the YOLO and all the different <laughs> things that we want to quote. Right. And you see me, I, I about me right about now and, and, and self-worth. And mm -hmm. these things are important in an aspect. But let us get the right picture that is necessary. If Christ has called us, he has called us also to give others the freedom. Correct. But if we don't live in freedom, as you rightfully said, Diana, I'm glad you raised that point, we cannot help others to mm -hmm. be free. Yeah. So are you free? Question. Are you free to live? Are you living in the spirit of Christ? So more and more time, questions. So at this time, we'll have a word of prayer. We want to thank you all for being with us. Yes. And we want to pray that God's word would really find lodging in our hearts. Almighty God, again, we want to thank you for this opportunity. We want to thank you for um, you, O oh Lord, using us to just spread this part Truly. of your word. We Truly. want to thank you for this experience. We want to thank you for your presence with us. And even those who have been listening, even those who have, are watching this stream, dear God, I ask you all at this time to please send the Holy Spirit. Yes. Help them to be touched by your Holy Spirit. Yes, Help Lord. them to open their minds and open their hearts that they will let go of culture, they will let go of the status quo, yes. and they will do what is necessary to serve you in spirit and in truth. Continue to show forth your love towards us. Show us with your love, dear God, so that we will just continue to move forth from strength to strength in your name. Continue to be with us and continue to bless us. And again, dear God, we just ask you, as we strive to uplift your name, that we will be drawn closer to you day by day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
happy Sabbath and happy new year 2024. We are so happy that God has been gracious to us, merciful to us. He has kept us through 2023 and brought us safely into 2024. For this, we are grateful. We trust that you and your family are doing well and we wish you bountiful blessings for 2024 from all of us here at ASI Media Tobago Adult Lesson Study Panel. I'm your host, Natasha Brown Allen, and this is our first installment of this quarter, new quarter, first quarter, 2024. Mm -hmm. We are looking at the book of Psalms. Mm -hmm. It is going to be intriguing and exciting. We want to encourage you to try to read out the book of Psalms during this quarter. So the challenge is going out there for us all, including myself, to read out the book of Psalms for this quarter. I've calculated it to be about at least two Psalms per day. Mm -hmm. I think we can do that, yes? Mm -hmm. So that's the challenge. Why not get a journal? And as you read, jot down what God has inspired you, you know, from the reading of the Psalms. And I know that in the end, we will all be better off for it. Mm -hmm. This quarter... Um, Quarter's lessons were written by Dragoslovia Santrak, who Pastor Richard Frederick and Sister Vernerus Simon Frederick, who we have on the panel today, happen to know personally. <laughs> yes, yes. Isn't that excited? Yes. And that created more excitement for them <laughs> yes, yes. as we study this lesson together. Yes, yes, so yes. I'm so happy to have them joining us for the first two lessons of this quarter. So remember, if you do not have your lesson study guide, you can download a digital copy at absg.adventist.org. You won't want to miss a beat. So get your quarterly, get your Bibles out as we get ready to study this week's lesson, mm -hmm. How to Read the Psalms. Before we go into it, let's ask Pastor Frederick to pray for us and he'll read our memory text. Pastor? Let us pray. Father, unto thee we give thanks. We bless your name. Because you have brought us over to the year 2024. Hallelujah. Song the minds, healthy bodies, good friends and family. We are grateful, mighty God, for all that you have done. And we look forward to your continued goodness towards us in this year 2024. And so bless us now as we delve into your word, as we study the book of Psalms, mm -hmm. open our minds. Grant unto us the understanding, be with our listeners. Indeed, O oh Lord, allow them to learn and grow through this experience. We do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, Pastor, read for us this week's lesson, Memory Text. It's taken from Luke 24, verse 44 and 45, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, and it says, Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Verse 45 says, Then, he, then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. With that in mind, let's go to the book of Psalms. Mm -hmm. And how does it start? Psalm 1 starts this way. I'll just read two verses. Blessed, <coughs> excuse me, blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the Lord. In the law of the Lord, rather, and in his law, doth he meditate day and night. Amen. Yes, God's word is important, and we should meditate on it when? Day, day and, and night. night. Yes. The book of Psalm consists of 150 poems or prayers or hymns, which are grouped into five books. Book 1, Psalm 1 through 41. Book 2, Psalms 42 through 72. Book 3. Psalm 73 through 89, book 4, Psalm 90 through 106, and book 5, Psalms 107 through 150. 
The five book division of the sum is an early Jewish tradition that parallels the five book division of the Pentateuch. So this just gives us a little foundation. So let's find out who wrote the Psalms and what are the general types of Psalms that we have. Let's start with Sister Friend Frederick and then Pastor. Right, well, you told us that there are 150. Yes. And most of us, when you think about Psalms, you think about David. Mm -hmm, that's because right. Because the reality <laughs> is that he probably wrote about half of them. Yes, mm -hmm. that is true. But beyond David's um, authorship of the Psalms, we do have quite a number of other persons. You do realize that the other person, sometimes you know you're reading the Psalm and you see a Psalm of Asaph or a Psalm of Korah, and these persons were the Levites, like the musicians of their time. Mm -hmm. And so they would have written some of the Psalms. So we have quite a few of them written by, for example, Asaph, they would have written Psalm 50, Psalms 73 to 83. Um, we also have like Psalms 42. 44 to 47, Psalm 49, and these are written by the sons of Korah. We may remember Korah from the days of the Israelites being in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Of course, they were, they were Levites, and his sons, they were musicians. Right. So quite a few of the Psalms, they wrote them. And even Solomon is known to have authored at least two of the Psalms mm -hmm. that are there in the Bible, as we as you know, Psalm 72 and Psalm 127. And even Moses himself. Right. They've authored one of the Psalms, right. that is Psalm 90. And of course, we saw it all, the list was given to us there under Monday's lesson, just kind of showing us the diversity that we have. So it wasn't only David, but mm -hmm. several persons who have written based on their experience. And as you said, rightly said, the Psalms are hymns, they are praise, the prayers, they are songs of praise. And so these persons would have written some from their own experiences, mm -hmm. you know, but beyond that, what was common among all of them was that they were inspired by the Holy Ghost. Because as we do, we, we all know the Bible is an inspired book. Mm -hmm. And so just like all the other rest of the parts of the Bible, just like Genesis, Job, Revelation, Daniel, mm -hmm. the Psalms were also inspired. So yes, it was men giving their experiences, but the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit inspired them as mm -hmm. to how to put those words together mm -hmm. to give us what we now know as the Psalms. Amen, amen. Pastor? All right, well, we have some general types of the Psalm, mm -hmm. and we have... I'm just going to list the categories as we go along. We have the hymns, mm -hmm. and in, under hymns, we have subcategories like general hymns, historical hymns, Zion hymns, kinship hymns. And so I, I just want to mention a few under the hymns, like Psalm 8, mm -hmm. which says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent mm -hmm. is your name Hallelujah. in all the earth, <laughs> yes. and Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. Then we have the laments. Mm. So the first category is hymns. Second category, we have the laments. Mm. We have individual laments, and we have communal laments. Mm -hmm. And one of the most popular communal laments is Psalm 137, mm -hmm. right, by the rivers of Babylon. Mm, oh, my, right. I can't say <laughs> Right, but, but there's, we, another, there's another popular one, Psalm mm -hmm. 60, that we normally say, Hear my cry, O Lord, attendant to my prayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's another one of the laments, too, yes. All mm -hmm. right. Amen. And then we have some miscellaneous forms, and that would include royal psalms. We have individual thanksgiving, communal thanksgiving, um, individual and communal psalms of confidence. Mm -hmm even didactic psalms and prophetic exhortations. So in some of the psalms, you know, um, there are prophecies found in those psalms. Like David would have prophesied concerning Jesus, yes, uh, his death, you know, on Calvary's cross, etc. And so these are the type of psalms that we, that we have. Quite a few, quite a lot to take in. <laughs> so we want to just encourage you, go through the, the quarterly because it tells you and it categorizes those Psalms for yes, you yes. so that you will be able to pick out, you know, which ones belong into which category. So now that we have that foundation, we just want to put in that, as Professor Vernon said, the entire book, the entire Bible was inspired by God. Amen, and that's amen. why Second Peter 1.21 tells us, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy amen. men of God spake as they were moved amen. by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And also Second Timothy 3.16 tells us, All Scripture, all scripture amen. Amen. is given amen. by inspiration of God amen. and is profitable for doctrine, amen. for reproof, for correction, 
for instructions in righteousness. Mm -hmm. In other words, the entire Bible, including the Psalms, <laughs> is inspired by God. Amen. So let's look at ways we can incorporate the Psalms into our lives as a whole, and in particular in our worship experience, whether in a corporate or a private setting. Who will go first? All right, well, <clears throat> I go first. Mm -hmm. And I want to note that there is remarkable beauty and appeal in the Psalms, mm -hmm. both as um, prayers and as praises. That's right, that's right. And these Psalms are the word of God in the form of the pious prayers and the praises of the believer. So mm -hmm. we want to establish that, right? Mm -hmm. That these Psalms are not just a reflection of individual thoughts, or opinions, but they are actually inspired. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the aspect of the prayers, I want to look at that. Romans 8, 26 and verse 27 says, Likewise, the mm -hmm. Spirit also helps mm -hmm. in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for mm -hmm. as we ought, mm -hmm. but the Spirit himself maketh intercession mm -hmm. for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. Yes. yes. Now, he who searches, the text says in verse 27, he who searches the hearts know what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession mm -hmm. for the saints according to the will of God. And Amen. so this text highlights the fact that, you know, sometimes we are going through our challenges and we just do not know how to pray. We do not know mm -hmm. what to say. Uh, and there is just the, the moaning and the groaning, <laughs> and the Holy Spirit <laughs> understands and actually yeah, translates. Yeah, yeah. But we yeah, also yeah. have, you know, individuals, as the Bible tells us, right, um, the experiences that we are going through, the challenges are such that, um, that are common right. to man, right? right? Yeah. And so <clears throat> the, 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 the psalmist they would have gone through similar experiences to us. Yes. And they would have been able to do the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to pray their prayers. And we could pray their prayers. We could repeat mm -hmm. their prayers. Yes. Uh, Just indicating as yes, yes, exactly. the situation, mm -hmm. itemizing. Because sometimes um, we may not want to actually identify um, you know, our particular feeling, which might be sometimes we may feel as though God is distant, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes we may be a bit annoyed or maybe even angry with God. Mercy. And, and using our own words might just seem so wrong. Mm -hmm. But when we use the words of the psalmist, you know, mm -hmm. who felt as though they were abandoned by God, felt mm -hmm. as though God was distant, so mm -hmm. they felt as though God was forsa had forsaken them, and we use such, then um, we are able now to pray and, and have God respond mm -hmm. to our prayers. Amen. Amen. And I think too, um, I think for all of us, we all know, we all use hearts. Yes. That, that's, I, I don't think, I don't think there's ever been a music day program where we haven't put mm -hmm. these hearts. Sure. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, Lord, you know. Yeah, we praise the Lord. Time. And everything have breath, praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. Every music program, you must have that, mm -hmm. you know. You have a Thanksgiving. You must have, you know, mm -hmm. you must read from the Psalms, you know. Mm -hmm. um, um, even persons when they go to bless the car, yeah. they come to bless your house. You, you mm -hmm. read from the Psalms. Mm -hmm. There are people who go to bed, the Psalm Bible opens the Psalms. So mm -hmm. the Psalms, they, they kind of relate to us in every day. And yeah. it speaks to the fact that the feelings that we have as humans transcends time. Yeah. doesn't matter what time it is. Because sometimes you read a psalm, and I don't know if you've ever had that experience. Sometimes you read a psalm, and it's almost as if... You the wrote the yeah, <laughs> It's like literally, what is there? Like, when yeah. I think, like, oh, well, I, I, I'll quote Your one of mine. experience. Yeah, it's like Psalm 34 for me. Like, there's some things when you read them, you're like, how did, like, mm. literally, like, what I was feeling, like, the words are already there. And so, because as human beings, there are some things that we feel... We all feel anger, we all feel mm. hope, we all feel despair, we all feel different things. And so the Psalms are really just there for, to help us to connect. Yeah. For me, it helps me to connect to know that, okay, well, the people who wrote the Bible weren't some aloof people that they know. Yes, they were inspired by God, but they human just like us. Mm -hmm. And so it gives you hope to realize that, mm -hmm. hey, we, we, you know, we can relate to this. We, this is something that we can connect to. Yeah. And I think that's, that's what, to me, makes the Psalm um, come alive. And that's how yeah. we can incorporate it. So you, you have it there, it's good for inspiration, yes. 
of course, it's good to use it, as I said, corporate worship, but we use it from, from time to time. As we read it through, you know, as a church, we could come together, you know, we, we give praise, we give thanks, and sometimes mm -hmm. you don't know how to praise God, but the yes, Psalm tells you exactly what to say. His mercies endure it forever. Amen. We give thanks unto the Lord for His mercies endure it forever. It, it makes yeah. our praises at times more eloquent, yes. our prayers more eloquent, <laughs> true, and, and we feel more comfortable as a result of the, it, yeah. yes, the eloquence <laughs> of our prayers, you yeah. know. Yeah. We, 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 we actually develop greater faith, mm -hmm. you know, as a result of praying those prayers and repeating those praises exactly. as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Remember, even Jesus himself would have used the Psalms to it. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. And so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. The Psalm is already there. The prayer is already there. The hymn is already there. Why reinvent the wheel? Just, just read. Just use it. Just use it. <laughs> you know, as um, the pr a lot of prayer warriors would say, Lord, I'm praying back your word uh, to yes, you. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, so it's there for us to use. Amen? Amen, amen. You know, Tuesday speaks about a song for every season. Mm -hmm. In fact, it points out that the Psalms make the believing community aware of the full range of human experience and they demonstrate that believers can worship God in every season in life. In them, we see the following one, hymns that magnify God for his majesty and power in creation, his kingly rule, judgment and faithfulness. Two, thanksgiving psalms that express profound gratitude for God's abundant blessings, laments that are heartfelt cries to God for deliverance from trouble, wisdom psalms that provide practical guidelines for righteous living, royal psalms that points us to Christ, who is the sovereign king and deliverer of God's people, historical psalms that recall Israel's past and highlight God's faithfulness and Israel's unfaithfulness to teach the coming generations not to repeat the mistakes of their ancestors, but to trust God and to remain faithful to his covenant. Amen. But let's look a little deeper into the poetic devices mm -hmm. um, used in the Psalms. Sister Vernon, tell us a little more about that as we read the Psalms. And coincidentally, that, that is one of the things that gets me excited about the Psalms. The poetic. Yeah, that, that poetic <laughs> part of it. It's like literally, it's like reading literature. Mm -hmm. For those of us who have studied English, mm -hmm. you know, you learn about the literary devices. Yes. And so you can actually see some of the imagery that you see in, in the Psalms. You know, I mean, you see it's just some metaphors, personification is there. You know, they'll use similes, there's parallelism. Um, I mean, just the way they play on words. Mm -hmm. It's to me, I mean, even even at USC, there are some class we, we are actually offer a class where we look at the literary study in the Bible, so study literature, biblical literature. Wow. And we actually look at how the literature, the different literary devices Ayy. are seen in the Bible. And of course, one of the major parts of the Bible that we normally Ayy. refer to Psalms. would be the Psalms, you know, because it is it is so evident there. And I think that um that poetic nature of the Psalms, kind of, at least for me, it excites me. Mm -hmm. I suspect it's also like poetry, like literature. Um, I could imagine Sister, Sister Otley, Sister Minette Otley, I'm um, getting excited reading the Psalms yes, also because yes. she's a literature teacher, you know. So, mm -hmm. so it, for us, it gets us excited, you know. I can but, see the excitement. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think beyond that, it also helps us in learning the Psalms. Yes, yes. Because, I mean, you can literally rattle off, make a joyful noise, and so that you put your rhythm there, you have your rhythm, you have your rhyme. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it, it makes it easier for us to memorize the scripture as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so because, I mean, poetry is fun. Let's, yeah. let, let's just face it, regardless of... How, whoever you may be. And even now you realize in worship, we're using a bit more poetry. We yes. have spoken word and so on. And this is, I mean, this is spoken word in print. In literally print. right there, mm -hmm. you know. So for me, I get all excited about it, you know. Mm -hmm. Definitely a song for every season. <laughs> Definitely a song for every season. You know, as Sister Bonis would have pointed out, and also the author pointed out, Jesus too used mm -hmm. the Psalms. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in Luke 20, 42 to 43, he quoted directly from Psalm 110, verse 1. Now David himself said in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. This is under Wednesday's lesson. Mm -hmm. So, Pastor, what should Jesus' use of the Psalms tell us about the importance that they could play in our faith? experience right so jesus's use or jesus use of the <laughs> psalms you know shows the authenticity of the psalms that's as right. the that's word right. of that's god right. shows that indeed they are inspired Amen. and so they are profitable for doctrine Amen. for review Amen. for instruction for yes and so he shows that um but knowing that the psalms have been used for both prayers and praises in particular and thanksgiving mm -hmm. right and and when we're thinking about prayer sometimes individuals go through some 
very trying situations, yes, yes, yes. you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, it is hard to voice those situations. The, the situations don't seem so palatable, mm -hmm. but the Psalms make our human experiences palatable, mm -hmm. you know, as they are related, mm -hmm. and it also makes them relatable. For example, I'm looking at Psalm 42, mm -hmm. and the psalmist says, Oh my God, my soul is cast down mm -hmm. within me. Yes? Mm -hmm. Therefore, and well, this, the text before says, Why are you cast down, oh yeah. my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Mm -hmm. It makes it even more palatable. Um, Psalms 44, this one here is quite interesting. It says, But you have cast us off. Hmm. and put us to shame. Wow. The psalmist here is speaking to, um, to God. And wow. you do not go out with our armies. How often we felt as though we're battling hmm, alone. Hmm. But, but uh, what do we say? God, why, why are you not fighting with me? Mm -hmm. But it sounds so much <laughs> more eloquent, I would say. <laughs> you make us turn back from the enemy and those who hate us have taken spoil for themselves. Mm -hmm. You have given us up like sheep intended for food. Mm -hmm. But as the psalmist went mm -hmm. on, we would see that the psalmist indicate that God did not forget them. Amen. Uh, uh, as, Amen. as in Psalm 42, hoping God for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Mm -hmm. yes. I like that. So, so we see in here the lament, but we also see in the reality mm -hmm. that even though we may have these trying situations, God, just like he came through for the psalmist, can come through for us today. Mm -hmm. And if I, can sure. add, if mm -hmm. I could add, we see as well that because of the various devices being used, mm -hmm. you know, poetic um, forms, mm -hmm. We find in the psalm, we see that Jesus as well was very creative. He used many literary devices. He used allegories. He used the parables. Oh, and yes, he used the psalms. He used poems. And so he did not limit himself to one way of transmitting, mm. you know, the because, word of God. Uh, yes, right? Yes. Transmitting the character of God. Mm -hmm. And so the psalms are an efficient way of transmitting to us mm -hmm. the character of God, bringing out the beauty of God. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like mm -hmm. Psalm 27 and verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord, <laughs> and that will I seek after, <laughs> that I may well. dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, yeah. and behold the beauty yes. of his... Amen. Right? The amen. beauty of his temple is the beauty of God. Amen. 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 You know, and the author for this um, quarter's lesson starts off says the Psalms where God and people meet heart yes. to heart. Yes. Yes. And definitely, until definitely. we meet with him face to face. Amen, amen. You know, on the flip side of that, Sister Vernerys, mm -hmm. there are some people who read and rely on the Psalms wholly and solely, disregarding mm -hmm. the rest of the mm -hmm. Bible. How dangerous is that? Um, I think when you do that, you limit yourself to a surface level. Mm. So, level connection. so really get a true connection. Because remember the entire Bible reveals God's character. Yes, yes. And while the Psalms are good because you know, they give us those different moments, we have emotion. So the Psalms we like the emotional part of the Bible. Mm. But remember the Bible is not just given for emotion. Correct. It's given for instruction, mm -hmm. for proof, for correction. How am I going to know what am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. I need to read the rest of the Bible. I need to read yes. the instructions. Yes. I need to connect. I need to... So read the experience of those who went before me and see what they did, yeah. how they did it. Mm -hmm. so, and so I can avoid making some of the mistakes. Yeah. And I can repeat some of the good things that they did. Correct. You know? So to, to really get the full experience, you need to read the full Bible. You can't rely on the Psalms alone. Because for most of us, sometimes we stick, we stick in the Psalms mm -hmm. and we get caught up in our emotions. Yeah. Caught up in our feelings. Mm. Forgetting that Christianity is not just about feelings. Mm -hmm. God not only wants our hearts, He wants our minds as well. Mm -hmm. It's a conscious choice you're making. So yeah. to make a conscious decision for Christ, you mm -hmm. need to know exactly what you're getting into. Right. So connect with God on a deep, on a deeper level, and we go through the entire Bible, the entire Bible. and really allow the Psalms to connect. I one one person, I think it was Mark for me, who was saying someone said to him, the Psalms are really right there in the middle because they connect, you know, the mm -hmm. Old and the New Testament, they connect the past and the future, and so, wow. so the Psalms are there to connect. Mm -hmm. But if you're not reading the other side, so what you connect to do, you know? Wow. So you really need to make that, make the connection by reading the entire Bible, you know? 
Beautifully put. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Now, Pastor, back to you. You know, we spoke about various authors um, contributing to the book of Psalms. So based on the Psalms, we see where different authors use different description of God or mm -hmm. called God by different names. So tell us about that um, relationship and how, what place God occupied in the minds and the lives of these psalmists as they reflected and wrote and how we too can use these various um, names for God. All right. So these individuals are indicating that God is at the center of their hymns, mm -hmm. their praises, mm -hmm. their thanksgiving, their lives. Mm -hmm. Right? God is in the center of the Psalms. Right. We have nice examples, Psalm 16 and verse 8. David speaking here, he says, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand, mm -hmm. I, I shall God. not be moved. Yes. Psalm 46 and mm -hmm. verse 1, it says here, God, God is our refuge and our strength, strength. Yeah. a very present help in time of trouble. That's a, that's a popular one. Yes. Psalm 47 and we see verse 1 say, Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. For God is king of all the earth. Verse 7, mm. sing praises with understanding. And so what this is indicating is that the psalmists, the various psalmists, they realize that God is at the center and they place God mm -hmm. at the center Everything. of their lives. Um, mm -hmm. In today's society, we dichotomize. Mm -hmm. we, we do some cutting and some mm -hmm. separating. Mm -hmm. So we say, um, you know, I have a secular life mm -hmm. that is like my social life, my recreational life, mm -hmm. my sex life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that's, separate. That, that's mm -hmm. separate from that's God. Like, when, when I'm with God... My spiritual life is seen when I'm at church and I'm serious, I'm focused, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But as soon as church or worship is finished now, mm -hmm, then, then yes, I can allow other things to come yes. in. But they did not see the, um, God mm -hmm. as such, Amen. you know. God and so... God is everywhere. Right. Yeah. And, and, and so even as we go through the psalm, we will see like Jehovah Rapha. You know, God is my healer. Mm. You know, we, 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 we may think healing is for the doctors mm. and for medication, mm. but they saw God as their healer. Yeah, right? yeah. They saw God as their peace. Right. They say, God, Jehovah, Nisi, God mm. is my banner, my protector, Amen. my Amen. shield. Yeah. And so just as they saw God and used terms that would identify um, God providing in various aspects of their lives. So we could use those names, Jehovah Shalom, right? He is our peace, peace mm. right? Jehovah Jireh, my provider. provider. Yes, he gives us strength, but ultimately all that we have, it is he who has, yes, provide. Amen. I love that. So who is God to you, viewers? Write something mm -hmm. in the chat that, yes, you know, yes, that, yes. that special name that you like for mm -hmm. God. How, how do you identify with him even now? For me, he's my friend. Yeah. I love that. You yeah. know, knowing that he's my friend, he's a faithful friend and father, that touches me. So what impacts you even more? Mm -hmm. Sister Vernerous, how can the Psalms help us better understand, um, you know, piggybacking a little bit on what Pastor would have said and, mm -hmm. and elaborating even more, help mm -hmm. us to better understand how we should not and cannot limit God to certain aspects of our existen existence only. And by extension, what might be, I mean, Pastor would have touched on it already, mm -hmm. but perhaps you might have some more areas in which mm -hmm. sometimes we kind of oust God mm -hmm. out of it. Mercy Jesus, mercy Jesus. And I think, as he rightly said, when you read through the Psalms, you realize that God literally is everywhere. Mm. He's there in the good times. And let me let me point to I, I have to refer to it. Psalm 34. If you look at Psalm 34, I'm <laughs> yes. sorry. If you look at Psalm 34, throughout the Psalm you're literally seeing in the Psalm, different areas in the Psalm. We begin the Psalm by saying, Bless the Lord, O my soul, you know? Mm -hmm. And then and then we go and say, Magnify the Lord with me. me. Then you hear mm -hmm. this poor man cried. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you talk about the fact that um the, the, you, you wouldn't lack any good thing if you mm -hmm. want to stay with God. So literally, God is there in the high moments, the low moments. He's 
in every moment. That's it. Because God doesn't change. God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. Amen. He's literally everywhere. So I don't know why we sometimes think that we have to keep God in the church building. Hmm. You know why we but have to limit ourselves yeah. to God? Or we, or we, or for some of us, unfortunately, we put on Jesus on Friday evening. Mm -hmm. So just before sunset, or maybe after the sunset, you put him on. And after and that. And you have him, and then by Saturday evening, we throw mm. him off again, you know? Mm. But he's the God of everything. I yeah. mean, the reality of the, the Bible tells us God came to, as man. Mm -hmm. He was tempted in all points like as, as we are. are. Yet yes, without sin. sin. So I can, so if God was tempted in all points, it literally means everything that you could possibly think, think. about. Mm. Jesus would have experienced it, Mercy. and he knows about it. Mm -hmm. I really can't hide it from him. So part of talk about his social life. You think mm -hmm. God don't know what you're doing when they, when they exactly. go Saturday night, jumping up somewhere, where we're jumping. Not supposed to, go and to jump be up, jumping up. You know? Mm -hmm. Or even sometimes they may be jumping up with with fellow believers, but somehow we think because it's a, it's a social event, we can't, you know, God, God doesn't belong here. Yeah. So, I mean, so, so if I decide to put on a gospel song, I'm seen as... Fanatic. Fanatic. What, what, what yeah. happened to you, you know? It does you know, come from church. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, let's <laughs> free up. Let, 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 let's, let's free up yourself. Let down yeah. your hair. Yeah. You know what I mean? But literally, God is here. I remember making a joke with some person. Sometimes, you know, as children, you look at some people and you wonder, them look so old. You think that they have, you know, like husbands and wives. You think they have the intimate relations. Mm. And, you know, we joke and say, those are like people that probably pray before they do it and that kind of thing. Mm. But God is there when you're doing it. So, yeah. but, but, I mean, for what, as well. what, what, mm. what do you, it, do, do, do you think that God decides, well, this, this is, this, um, this going PG-13, you know, this is Ari, so I have to walk out the room because, no, yeah, he's, he's there. Blessed is that, is that exactly. bed, eh? the marital bed. Yes, the marital bed is on the file. Yes. So that God is even there in, in those moments. So we should never feel that there's anything that we're doing that we can't in, in wow. include God in, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I always give the example of, of um, some years earlier, very early in my experience, when my husband was all excited about, you know, Christianity and, and, and being, and he opted to throw away all our secular CDs. And I was mm -hmm. angry. I was like, you're crazy. I mean, mm -hmm. so, we wanted to go. so, and my question to him was, do you want to listen to gospel all day long? Mm -hmm. And to me at that point, I thought he was being fanatic, you know? But the reality of the matter is, I am literally in a place now where I can literally sit down and listen to gospel all day, you know, yeah, listen to it at, at work and it, it really calms your soul, you know. Yeah. And 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 the, the exciting thing about gospel music is that it has so many genres that I yes. can literally find mm -hmm. a gospel song for any mood. I mean, just like how you can find a psalm. Amen. So there are psalms that you can find for any mood and you're feeling mellow. There's a psalm there for you. If you're excited, you want to dance and clap, there's a psalm for that, mm -hmm. you know? If you're angry with God, even there's a psalm for that. Let's see. Yeah, so so <laughs> just like how we have that, so God literally is there with us mm -hmm. in everything at all times. It's and we should never think that we can limit him to just a certain day mm -hmm. or a certain place, you know? Mm -hmm. Because he's God. He cannot be boxed in. And he should not be boxed in. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And in fact, just elaborate the point, going to the psalm itself, relying on the psalm. It says mm -hmm. in Psalm 139, 7 to 10, where shall I go from your from ah, my spirit? Yes. And where shall I flee exactly. from thy presence? Exactly. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the mm -hmm. sea, mm -hmm. even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy exactly. right hand shall exactly. hold me. So mm -hmm. God is mm -hmm. everywhere. Yes. And most of these psalms test. Um, testify yes. of the psalmist's experiences in that moment. In fact, Psalm 61 3 says, For thou hast been a shelter for me. Amen. Have you ever felt God being a shelter Amen. for you Amen. and a strong Amen. tower from the enemy? Amen. Amen. So, as we close, what is your favorite psalm and why? <laughs> my psalm is Psalm 103 Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his <laughs> benefits. Who Forgive it thy iniquities, who mm -hmm. heal it thy diseases, who redeem it thy life from destruction and crown thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. And it just tells us about the goodness of God. Amen. It just tells of the power of God. And it tells us that we must always remember who he is Amen. and what he has Amen. done. And that's why I love that Amen. psalm. Amen. Amen. Well, I alluded to it. I think I let the psalm back to so, Yes. I will bless you at all times. His praise shall mm -hmm. continually be in my mouth. And when you read the psalm, it really emphasizes the all times. You know, the angels mm -hmm. will only come on the body not fear them and deliver them. He says, the young lions do lack and suffer, but they that see the Lord shall not want any mm. good thing. Yeah. Said, so this psalm really kind of all encompasses what we've been talking about today. Blessing the Lord at 
oh, all right. times, you know, and of on and, and, and we all know the popular song. So when that when Brooklyn Sab sang that song, I was like, oh my goodness, yeah. my Sam is now a song. <laughs> so everybody's going to love my Sam now, you know. Mm -hmm. So yes, Sam thirty four is it? That's that that is it. Amen, mm -hmm. amen. Well, Pastor's favorite Sam is Sam one hundred three. He said, yes. Mm -hmm. Sister Vernon says Sam thirty four mm -hmm. minus Sam forty six. Why? Yes. Type in the chat. What is your, your favorite, favorite Sam? Yes. Sam yes. Okay. Yes. And whether we read the Psalms chronologically or we read it just specifically because of our situations, mm -hmm. the Psalm remain relevant for us amen, today. Amen, and amen. you know, at our local church um, on Wednesday gone, we would have looked at Psalm 51, 10 to ah, start the year. Yes. Create in me a clean heart, heart amen, oh God, amen. and renew a right spirit mm -hmm. within me. This is a wonderful prayer to start the new year. Amen. Sister Frederick, kindly pray with those thoughts in mind. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are so happy that we can come to you today to speak about your word. Beyond that, we are happy that we have the Psalms, which when we don't know what to say, we can go there and find your words there. Words that give us peace, words that give us comfort, words that express our joy or hope or despair. Lord, we are just grateful that you have thought about everything that we'll ever need and provided the right there for us mm -hmm. in your word. So Lord, we pray even now as we go through the rest of the Sabbath day that indeed we would continue to allow ourselves to be blessed by you. But beyond that, we would allow your words to mm -hmm. dwell in our so hearts, mm -hmm. experience them, to permeate our souls and experience them throughout our daily lives. We pray in your precious name. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Pastor and Sister Frederick. Mm -hmm. Thank you, viewers. We'll see you next week for Lesson 2, Teach Us to Pray. God Amen. bless you. Until next time. Bye for now. Bye. Now we have some announcement for you. Take note. Firstly, we want to start out with Generation of Praise Presents. Everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. An evening of songs, drama, and fellowship. You don't want to miss this fantastic production. This takes place on the 13th of February, 2024, at Scarborough SDA at 4 p.m. You are asked to bring a friend and walk with an offering of love. Are you interested in becoming a member of the Pathfinder Band? Then take note of the band's open registration on January 14, 2024 at 2.30 p.m., the location is Harmon School of SDA. Join us this week as we continue with our ASI media programming right here. On Wednesday at 6 p.m., join us for a sweet hour of prayer. On Friday, we will continue with our Friday evening worship at 6.30 p.m. and Youth War Talk at 7.15 p.m. Of course, we have our Sabbath morning service that begins at 9.15 a.m. Viewers, it's almost time for annual ASI convention in Tobago. What a speaker we have coming to spend some time with us. Mark the days, Friday 19th of January to Sabbath the 27th of January at the Good News SDA Church. Let's hear from our speaker for that week. Happy New Year. Greetings and salutations to all of you over there on the beautiful island of Tobago. I'm Pastor Peter Baptiste from the Norwalk Seventh-day Adventist Church over here in sunny Los Angeles, California. I tell you, I'm excited because I'm on my way. I'm coming to Tobago from January 19 to January 27. I'll be speaking for the ASI convention as your keynote speaker speaking on the subject, God's mandate, our priority. You know, it's amazing. Wherever and whenever God gives a mandate, a command, a set of instructions, an imperative, so to speak, you always got to look for the indicative. That's who God is, what he has already done, what he's already accomplished. Every single mandate, command, imperative of God is always articulated against the backdrop of what God has done, of who God is, of what he has already accomplished, of what he will do, of what God is up to in the world. This is going to be a powerful, exciting, and dynamic series of messages and preaching. We're going to be blessed. God is going to move in a mighty way. It's going to be spirit-filled. 
you won't want to miss it. So I invite you right here, right now, clear your schedule, rearrange your affairs, and plan to attend every single night where we're going to hear God speak to us in a powerful way, words that will be life transforming and that will be spirit filling and that will be invigorating and renewing. I promise you won't leave there as you came in Jesus name. Looking forward to see you there. You won't want to miss it. God bless you real good and a happy new year. segment come and be a part of our family join us every friday at 6 30 p.m for family worship let us welcome in the sabbath together as one each week we feature a new family you don't want to miss it so join us at 6 30 p.m every friday on airside media tobago on youtube or Facebook. See you there. Welcome to our worship time together. Today we are focusing on restoration. And 1 Peter 5.10 tells us that after you have suffered a little while, the God of grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. What a wonderful promise. 
Join us as we exalt his name together and praise him for being our king, our savior, and our restorer. He is exalted. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise His name. Society, we have the assurance this morning that we have someone who is on our side. We have Jesus. And so we invite you to join us as we sing this powerful song today. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit. in his blood this is my story this is my song raising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song 
angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy whispers of love this is my soul says, my whole being will exclaim, who is like you, Lord? You rescue the poor from those too strong for them. My soul will rejoice in the Lord and delight in his salvation. What a wonderful, merciful Savior we serve. Sing with us this beautiful song. Keeper, spirit we long to embrace. 
Our speaker today, Pastor Vishnu Prasad, loves the Lord Jesus. He believes in the power of prayer. The motto he seeks to live by was inspired by a popular quote that says, The greatest want of the world is the want of men. Men who will not be bought or sold. Men who in their inmost soul are true and honest. Men who do not fear to call sin by its right name men whose conscience is as true to duty as the needle to the pole, men who will stand for the right through the heavens fall. And that's taken from Education, page 57. His motto is not for sale. It simply means he seeks to live by a life of integrity. Pastor Passad presently serves as the prayer coordinator, global mission director, and president of the Tobago Conference of Seven-day Adventists. Pastor is happily married to Andrea Andrews. They recently welcomed a birth of their second son, Nathaniel Andrew Passad. As a family, they look forward to the second coming of Christ, where they will be united with their first son, Jeremiah David Passad. He solicits your prayers so that he can be an effective, consecrated Christian husband, father, and church leader. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for being the God that you are. Lord, we're so thankful that we are here today, Heavenly Father. As we start this new year, we ask your Holy Spirit blessing, a blessing on the leaders of our church, a blessing on the leaders of this country, Heavenly Father. I pray this year, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will take control, Heavenly Father, that we will be able to reach out to someone in need, Lord. Lord, I say a special prayer for the speaker of the hour, Pastor Passad. I pray, Lord, that you will give him the right words to speak to your people, Lord. I pray that someone listening to this service even now will receive a blessing, Heavenly Father. Draw close to them even now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning and a happy Sabbath. It is indeed a privilege for us to be in the land of the living. It's a privilege for us to be in 2024. Many persons will have journeyed towards 2024, but sadly they did not make it to this new calendar year. We are here not because of our own strength and wisdom, but we are only here because of God's grace and mercy. If you are thankful to be alive and to be in the land of the living, then the Bible tells us the dead cannot praise thee 
Need a day that can go down to the grave will hope for his remembrance. So I want to invite you to thank the Lord Jesus for the gift of life. Why not type in the chat, thank you, Jesus? Or maybe that's a long word. You might want to say, Amen. Or oh, praise the Lord. Just in case you are tempted to serve the net, to look for another program, I want to let you know that God has a special message for you. You are not tuned in here by chance. It is by God's providence, God's design. And I invite you to just spend a few moments with us as we look at God's word and we can be able to see great and wondrous things from the scriptures. To introduce our sermon title, let me first tell you a story. It was in the year 2000 that Stuart Manley and his wife Mary attended an auction where they won the bid for a box of books. To their surprise, at the bottom of the books was a poster. The words on the poster was catchy and highly motivational. The family never saw anything like it before and decided to frame it and put it in the bookstore that he and his wife owned. It was not long after that customers who visited the store noticed the framed poster and just as the couple, they fell in love with the words. In fact, many persons when they came into the store from time to time will inquire if the poster, if the frame poster with a catchy phrase message was a sale. And many times they would have to say the same answer. No, it wasn't. But the owner wanted to share the love and uh, owners wanted to share the love and they decided to investigate if they were able to share this message that was life transforming. So upon getting many requests, they checked the copyright laws to see if they were able to reproduce the poster. To their pleasant surprise, the flyer was already 60 years old. And because they had an original, they were well within their rights to make copies. They first made, they, they first made 50 copies and were sold, as people would say in today's language, as hot bread. Then they made 500. That amount was sold quickly as well. Selling copies became a steady business for this couple. In 2005, an American newspaper called The Guardian did an article about the original intent of this old poster. And the very next month, would you believe, 9,000 more copies were sold. What is it about this flyer, or rather what it is about this message that is so captivating? You see, the flyer was created by the British in 1939, in the midst of World War II. The threat of the Nazis' invasion was spreading like wildfire. In an attempt to turn the tide of fear to one of hope, 2.5 million, yes, you heard right, 2.5 million posters were printed in red with the message, stay calm, or keep calm, rather, and carry on. And that's the message for today. That's the message for today's sermon. Type in the chat the message for today. Keep calm and carry on. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, may this message come alive. And may your people all over the world be blessed. Whether they tune in today or they tune in some other time. May your word live on. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep calm and carry on. Brothers and sisters, friends of mine, let me introduce you to another paper that has similar stories with a similar message. In fact, 
it is this paper called the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible, that will have inspired the British to have hope and thus declare, keep calm and carry on. You see, this Bible, this B-I-B-L-E, written, though written so long ago, is still relevant for today's society. This Bible, though, will have come from a different context, a different landmass. You will have recognized that the Bible still speaks to us today in 2024. I'm so happy for the, happy for the Bible because in the Bible, all the messages let us know that we must keep calm and carry on. You see, almost everywhere, every time and everywhere in different worlds, and when I say different worlds, different ages rather, God's people are perplexed. They are sometimes agitated. They are sometimes anxious. They are sometimes worried. And God whispers to us, so just be calm and carry on. One such experience is found in the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 14, 13 to 15. Hear what the Bible says. The Bible says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, in other words, keep calm, and see the salvation of the Lord which he will shew to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. You see, the Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Now you might say, Pastor, I agree with you. That passage thus far is indicating that God is sending a clarion call to even those who were in Egypt and saying to them, keep calm. But pastor, where's the next section? Where's the other half? Which part do you see the term, the phrase, carry on? Well, look at what the Bible says. The Bible continues by says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. Hallelujah. The Bible is very clear. When the Egyptians came after the Israelites, God's people, God's nation, God is saying to them, listen, you may see the Egyptians today, but I'm able to swallow them up before your very eyes. You just keep calm and carry on. I don't know about you, but some of you have some modern day Egyptians. Maybe you have some landlords. Maybe you have an ex who is giving you problems. Maybe you have a, a boss, a supervisor behaving like a pharaoh, but I want to let you know even in 2024 you just gotta keep calm the egyptians that you saw or you're seeing right now give god some time to work give god some time to give you that breakthrough and you tell you as you are calm just walk forward keep calm and carry on but you see while this passage is potent God is saying that there are other passages that have the same message, but there's one I want us to focus on today. At first, it may not seem as dramatic, but when we unpack it, the message will be equally intriguing and all will receive it with gladness. The message comes from the passage Isaiah 43. 18 and 20. Isaiah 43, 18 to 20. Bible says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now we shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. It seems like yesterday. The experience is etched in my memory. 
the first time driving on one of the busy highways in Trinidad. One of my older brothers, the owner of a, a green wagon, we fondly call Gloria, is in the front seat, our front passenger seat, and yours truly behind the steering wheel. Before leaving the park position, Big Bro Main's advi main advice was remember Vishnu to use your mirrors. I knew it was the main advice because it was repeated about three times. Vishnu, remember to use your mirrors. Vishnu, remember to use your mirrors. Vishnu, remember to use your mirrors. The engine started. Gloria exited the driveway and we were off. The journey began with my two hands firmly on the steering as they taught us in driving school. I thought to myself, well, Vishnu, you got this. Well, brothers and sisters, that confidence for 20 minutes into the trip was quickly shattered. What I first considered to be my perfect voyage was interrupted with a loud horn and an angry face overtaking us. My brother blurted out, what happened to use your mirrors? It was that day the sobering reality that the council of use your mirrors is plural and not singular. You see, I was only looking at the rear view mirror. I was only looking up. But I recognized that there is a powerful use of the side mirrors because the side mirrors causes you to see things that you may not see in the rear view mirror. They are able to show you blind spots. And so that day when that horn came pounding in my ears, I recognized that there is value in looking into the mirrors. And so shortly after that near-death experience, you could appreciate that I was a little disoriented. My driving was much slower and my posture boiled down to robotic fashion. I looked up, then looked right, then I looked to the left, right up, right, left, and I'm just making a triangle with my eyes because I'm looking now at all the mirrors until I could hear my brother screaming at me, Vishnu, look forward! You see, what happened to me, I was so uh, tormented, I was so traumatized, that's the better word, I was traumatized by being in an accident, almost in an accident, that I now uh, was now looking always back in the mirrors. When my brother had to say, look forward, point number one. I want to let you know about this popular quote. quote. Point number one is that the windshield is bigger than the rear view mirror. Because where we are going is more important than where we have been. Could I say it again? I was occupied looking at just the rear view mirror and the side mirrors. But this quote says the windshield is bigger than the rear view mirror. Because where we are going is more important than where we have been. It was Rebecca Olinga who made three comments on this popular quote on an online program. She says, the future is so much bigger than the past. Both the rear view mirror and the windshield are very important tools to have. But looking ahead is far greater experience than looking at what we have already passed by. We must stay vigilant to keep our windshields clean and free of obstructions that will impair our vision. Brothers and sisters, friends of mine, some have been slaves of fear. 
They are slaves of fear of their past. For them, the past is driving at a dangerous speed that appears one day to collide once more with the occupants of the vehicle called time. Are you trapped by your past? Are you trapped by 2023? Are you trapped by even 10 years ago? Are you trapped of, based on what happened to you in your childhood? Are you trapped? It could be uh, for a short period or it could be for a long period. My question to you, are you trapped? What are the mirrors you are looking to display? Maybe it's a past message sent on social media. A failed relationship. A traumatic experience of childhood. An unfortunate comment of a church member. A tragic, untimely death of a family member. Your son, daughter, your only child was snatched away from you. What haunts you even from your past? Are you in a driver's seat and that abuser's face haunts you to the point that you feel crippled? You are dressed all for work during the week or for church on weekends, but your world seems to be crumbling because of past experiences. Let me quickly state as well that fear doesn't only dominate the past. For some people, fear is associated more with the future. Some people are fearful what to expect for 2024. Fear of change, loneliness, failure, rejection, uncertainty, getting hurt, inadequacy, loss of freedom, and the list can go on. So in an attempt to evade their fears, persons hold on to special, significant, happy periods in the past. They are looking at the rearview mirror to hold on to that feel-good moment. This was the case with Israel. Israel was looking at the past. Israel was looking back at a feel-good moment. Israel was celebrating over and over what God did for them in the crossing of the Red Sea. You remember that story? What we referred to earlier? Where the Egyptians were eventually drowned in the water? Where God says to the, Egypt, um, the Israelites, keep calm and carry on. In other words, be still and see the salvation of the Lord go forward. Remember that story? Well, for years, the Israelites kept looking back at that feel-good story. But the Israelites in Isaiah 43, at that time, there was an impending conflict. Soon, the Babylonians were coming for the Israelites. Soon, the Babylonians will come to enslave again God's people. And instead of seeing the reality, they wanted to hide their minds, uh, hide their eyes from the reality by just soaking in the past and saying, well, listen, my God is a miracle working God and just rehearse a miracle of the past. But hear what God said to them. Israel, remember not the former things. I want to let you know that while that's a good story and I did it in the past, I want to let you know that your God is not stagnant. Your God could do it again. Remember not the former things. Neither consider the things of all. I could do it again. I want to say to you Israelites, and that's what Isaiah 43 was spent. Isaiah 43, 18 to 20. God says, I'm going to flip the script. He said, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now we shall spring forth. That shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Let me show you how God flipped the script. In the days when they left Egypt, what God did, God made dry land through the Red Sea. 
But now God said, listen, I'm going to flip the script. I'm going to give you water in desert. Hallelujah. You see, our God is so big. There is nothing that is impossible with God. So some of us believe that we are in 2024 and I'm afraid of the face 2024. But I want to let you know the God of 2023 is also the God of 2024. Hallelujah. I want to say this to you. Point number two. Do not allow the undue absorption of God's previous miracles to be a stumbling block to future deliverance. Can I say it again? I will say it again. Do not allow the undue absorption of God's previous miracles to be a stumbling block to future deliverance. God wanted to do something new. Yet Israel was holding on to something old. Understand that God is creator. As creator, his nature is to create. God is in the business of orchestrating new blessings day by day. Jeremiah tells us in Lamentation chapter 3, 22 to 23, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. See, though the sun rises and sets each day, none is exactly the same. Brothers and sisters, I want to let you know that God is able to handle your situation. He's able to take that experience where there's no money and whisper to you, look forward, keep calm, and carry on. He's able to whisper to you in a broken relationship. In 2023, you had a spouse. But in 2024, he or she is no longer there. God whispers, look forward. Keep calm and carry on. Maybe in 2023, you had your health. But on the brink, on the change of the new year, you were diagnosed with a, a disease that they don't even want to call. Yeah, a shame to mention. But God said, listen, look forward. Keep calm and carry on. You see, the people in Haggai, they made the same mistake. They were dwelling on past blessings. And they didn't see the blessing before their very eyes. You know, we could do that. We are just celebrating things happening 10 years and 20, happened 10 years and 20 years ago. But the blessing before our eyes, children, loved ones, the ability to see, the ability to touch, the ability to smell, the ability to move movements in the joints, ability to do many things. Let's celebrate the goodness of God even now. You know, in Haggai Day, the seniors, and this is not an attack on seniors, but the seniors weaken the hands of the young consecrated leaders. They compared the temple before the destruction of Jerusalem during the Babylonian siege to the one rebuilt during the Medio Persian Empire. But God in similar fashion set them straight. Haggai chapter 2, 3, 7 and 9 says, this is the experience of the seniors. They were mentioning to each one, saying to each other, who is left among you that saw this house in their first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of, as of nothing? Then God steps in. God says, listen, while they are saying that the seniors, God puts a full stop and then starts a new sentence. God says, and I will shake all nations. And the desire 
of all nations shall come, and I will fill his house with glory, said the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, said the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, said the Lord of hosts. In other words, if you didn't get the point, in the seniors' time of Haggai, when they had the first temple, while it had a marble land, it looked spectacular. The other temple, the one that in their mind was not in comparison to what they had before, is in that temple, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, will enter. The King of kings and Lord of lords, the one who is called the desire of all nations, is in that temple he will appear and he will be able to teach the people the great truths from the scriptures. We are living in the last days. And I know why persons say we are living in the worst of times. I want to say we are living in the worst of times and the best of times. Because it is in this period that our Jesus will put in his appearance. I don't know about you, but it wouldn't be long from now when Jesus will leave the most holy place and say it is finished and he's coming back for a people prepared to meet him. So while we are going through what we are going through, God is saying from the sanctuary, my children on ASI media platform, keep calm and carry on. I'm coming soon and I'm coming back for you. Go forward in 2024. That's not all. In the New Testament, the disciples was about to make the same mistake at the ascension of Jesus. Acts 1, 8, 11 tells us, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea, and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye up gazing into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. In other words, these two men, which really were angels, these two angels were saying, listen, stop just looking up. You got to look up and also look forward. Because God is saying, listen, there is work for us to do on planet earth before Jesus comes again. Yes, it was a spectacular sight. Yes, it was a sight to behold that Jesus goes entering into uh, heaven. He's going up in a cloud. But the angels are reminding us, listen, while there is a special blessing to see these things, there is a work to do. What's your plan for 2024? Are you only gazing up? God said, while you gaze up, also go forward. Spread the word that my coming is soon and even at the door. And the final reference I want to talk about is found in Philippians chapter 3, 13 and 14. Paul set the right example. He desired to receive all the blessings he could get. Philippians 3, 13 and 14 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark or the prize of the high calling of Christ, of God in Christ Jesus. Many are obsessed today with the Pope and every move he makes. They are all hyped when there is something negative in the news. But brothers and sisters, I purpose in my heart to follow only Jesus, only Jesus, no one else. I'm interested only in good news of salvation and that Jesus is coming again. 
So dearly beloved, today I say to you, don't look back, but look forward. Keep calm and carry on. 2023 is dead. 2024 is here. Look forward. Keep calm and carry on. Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. Keep calm and carry on. As I close, I want to ask a question. To everyone logged in, logged on, tuned in, tuned on, I want to ask you a question. Do you want to say to Jesus, Jesus, help me. Help me not to focus on the past. But I want to focus on the future. The future is bright, dearly beloved. He says he taught the things towards you. Thoughts of peace and not evil. To give you a bright and glorious future. So you say, Jesus, Help me to look to the future. Is that your desire? Put in your chat, help me. If that's your prayer, help me. What about maybe you're, you're holding on to some past blessing? You don't want to let go to receive more blessings. And you recognize today that this message is for you. That there are some blessings that will have been good for a time, but right now, God wants to give you greater blessings. And you're just holding on something past. He wants to give you something new. And you want that new blessing. Type in church, please, Jesus, give me. Please, Jesus, give me. And finally, 2024, you want to dedicate your life one more time to Jesus. Past blessings can't suffice. You've got to consecrate yourself day by day, moments by moments. And you want to say, Preacher, pray for me. I've got to be consecrated one more time for 2024. So I can keep calm and carry on. If you would like that special prayer, you can put that prayer symbol in a chat. And maybe you want help on a Christian walk? Contact us. We would like to help you on a Christian journey. With the heads bowed, eyes closed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what a mighty God you are. We love you. Many times we, we just falter. We are afraid. We are crippled many times because of fear. Fear of the past. And even the fear of what's the unknown, the future. But Lord, in the name of Jesus, liberate us today. Help us to be loosed by the shackles of the enemy. Help us not to stay in one position, but let us move forward. Help us to carry on. Oh, Lord, persons who have indicated that they want a special prayer to be rededicated for 2024. You know that song says, Lord, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, today. Take every one of us. Take our lips. Take our ears. Take our mouths. Take our eyes. Take our nose. Take our hands, your feet. But more so, take our heart. Take our mind. Sprinkle the blood of Jesus. Cleanse us, not with hyssop, 
Don't just purge us with natural elements. No, Lord, purge us with the blood of Jesus. Get into every crevice of the mind. Oh, Lord, and give us a heart like yours is our desire. A heart like yours is what we long for. Bless your children. And even this ASI media, bless this platform so that it can continue to be a means of spreading the light and saying to men and women far and wide, keep calm and carry on. This we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen.